In the opening pages of this comic book, former cameraman and later executive of Subaraya Productions, Shinichi Oka shares some fascinating insight about the circumstances under which the 1972 Red Man television series was filmed. A bunch of young adults went out into the countryside to make the next Subaraya Production Tokusatsu show. They were short on time, short on resources, and short on personnel. Despite the odds and the many shortcomings of the final product, they produce a unique series that has in recent years exploded in popularity. Now comic book author and artist Matt Frank lends his talents to the Crimson Kaiju Hunter and the results are very impressive. Frank adds a new dimension to the simple narrative of the television series, revealing that the exploits of Red Man are not fictitious and that what we thought was simply a low budget tokusatsu production is actually covertly recorded footage of battles on an alien world but this footage was not meant for the people of Earth. While Red Man fully retains his menace and remains as brutal with his executions as always, he seems less like a homicidal maniac than he did in this show, and that's a positive change in my opinion. As amusing as it was, this guy seemed a bit sick back in the day. This change is accomplished by reducing how much we see Red Man and keeping focus on the monsters until they are visited by the specter of death, which makes him feel more mysterious. But fear not, Red Man still has his Nazi salutes and signature weaponry. And someone in the comment section of my previous Red Man video compared Red Man to Goblin Slayer and that's a pretty apt comparison. If you were to drop the world building and other characters of that anime, it would be identical. A stoic silent hero wholly dedicated to his lonesome quest of merciless monster extermination. One thing I love about the television series is its atmospheric nature as the overcast foggy conditions, gloomy music, worn environment, lack of context or dialogue, and exaggerated sound effects all lent a surreal vibe. Frank doesn't simply keep what he can of this element. He plays it up as much as possible, and the vibrant coloring of Gonzalo Lopez, a remarkable improvement over the washed out colors of the show, increases the visual appeal of it all. Another improvement will be the monsters. Given the low budget, the show used, recycled, or what appears to be promotional suits from previous tokusatsu shows, and they were rarely in the best condition. Frank takes advantage of his limitless medium to make these creatures look far better than before. Along with sporting meticulous detail, they are highly expressive, wonderfully conveying everything from fear to aggression to satisfaction. There are some humorous bits, like the failed attempt of a few monsters to gang up on Red Man, and there are some genuinely touching bits, like when Kanegon is fretting its impending doom and Red Man ultimately spares its life because he respects its will to live. The book also has a behind the scenes section that includes further information about the 1972 television series, a character gallery, and lots of other neat imagery, both for the comic book and the show. Ultimately, Red Man the Kaiju Hunter Volume 1 is an enjoyable read you can knock out in no time and I would definitely recommend it. Frank and Lopez do an incredible job at adapting Red Man, all while staying true to the soul and sensibilities of the 70s live action series. It's awesome that an obscure property like this gets a second chance at life. For those who wish to see more of the Crimson Kaiju Slayer, this is definitely it.